All right, awesome. Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming out to this session. Um, my name is Jen, and I'm a program manager on the Azure App Service team. And today, I'm super excited to talk to you guys about how to keep your PaaS and serverless apps responsive and stable. So first, I kind of want to get a sense of who's in the room. So with a show of hands, how many of you guys um, have tried out App Service before? OK, great. That's awesome. Happy to have you guys here. Um, how many of you are interested in containers and Docker and interested in that? OK, cool. And then how many of our Azure Functions customers are here? OK, great. Also, it's a pretty nice overlap as well. So happy to have you all here with us. Um, so first, I'm going to go through a little bit of an agenda of what we're going to cover in this session. So I'm going to start off with the overview of PaaS and serverless so that we're on the same page. So maybe if you haven't tried out App Service, haven't tried out Azure Functions yet, we'll get up to speed. And then we're going to go into the bread and butter of this session, which is our demos. And I'm going to be showing you how you can learn about the tips and tricks to actually diagnose and solve your problems when you have issues with these apps on Azure. Um, so for each scenario, we'll be answering basically three questions. So what can go wrong? So what actually goes wrong? And these are the symptoms of what happens. So like, if you will, they're like the running, runny noses and sore throats. So you kind of have to diagnose and solve for your web app. Second, what actually happened and what was like the root cause and what actually happened so those symptoms actually started? And then lastly, how you can use our tools and what the app service team has built out for you so you can better diagnose and troubleshoot these applications when you do encounter these issues. OK, cool. So first, we're going to start off with an overview of kind of what the world looked like before PaaS and serverless. So these are kind of all the questions that you had to deal with when you're running things on-prem. You had to worry about your servers, really worry about maintaining the infrastructure um, and making sure everything is highly available. So um, what size server should I buy? Who has like physical access to our servers? Who monitors them? And while you can answer some of these questions with um, and while you can answer some of these questions with infrastructure as a service, with PaaS and serverless, as some of you guys know already, this is kind of abstracted away, and we worry about maintaining the high availability and actually updating and maintaining that infrastructure. So with that PaaS and serverless, things become much more simple. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about Azure App Service today. So this is basically the quickest and easiest way to deploy and scale your app um, on the Azure cloud without having to worry about maintaining the infrastructure. So that means you and your team can be more highly productive because you can focus on building your app and not having to um, manage the VMs and those questions that we looked at in the previous slide. So this is kind of a quick overview of the Azure App Service platform. But underneath the App Service platform, there's a lot of things under the umbrella. So I'm going to quickly walk through some of these, uh, so, or these services that we're going to look at, because that's what we're going to cover in this session when we learn how to keep them more responsive and stable. So first, to start out with our PaaS platform, so platform as a service, um, we started off with web apps. So this is the PaaS platform where you can deploy and scale your web app onto our managed platform and take advantage of all those productivity tools that our team has built and you can use without having your team actually go out and build them themselves. And then we promise the high, high SLA and you don't have to worry about that as well. We started App Service on Windows. And last year, at the end of last year in September, we actually went generally available with App Service on Linux and Web App for Containers. So for all of you interested in Docker and containers, we offered this service so you can actually either bring your code and run it on App Service on Linux, or even bring your own custom Docker container onto the platform and run that on the managed service as well. So it's a PaaS platform where you can super easily deploy and scale your Dockerized application on our platform. 
Next, we have our app service environments. So for customers who are interested in security and compliance and really need that extra layer of isolation, app service environment is an environment where you can deploy your web apps into. So you can take advantage of the secure network access features, you can deploy your app into a VNet, and you can actually have even higher scaling capabilities. So you can scale up to um, like 100 VMs on a app service environment. So that's kind of an overview of the PaaS offerings I'm going to go through today. Um, next, we have the serverless offering that we have on Azure Functions. So Azure Functions is our serverless platform and basically really great when you have scenarios that you want to execute based on event-driven scale. So all you have to do is write these small pieces of code and they would execute upon different triggers that you can set and automate. So that's what makes things serverless and you can really um, take advantage of that to really make sure you have like high throughput on the event-driven scale um, types of things. So with that overview done, I kind of, so a lot of you have tried this out before, and hopefully most of the time your app is happily running, it's healthy, so you're happy, your customers are happy, and hopefully um, your boss is happy as well. But sometimes bad things just happen to good apps. And when that happens, you really wanna make sure that you're empowering yourself to um, go and fix that as quickly as possible. So I want to go through and start out with web apps first. So how many of you have ever seen any of this, these issues, maybe seen your web app go down, your customers say it's, it's getting 500 errors, or maybe you accidentally deployed something a little bit sooner, and next thing you know, you're getting calls in the middle of the night? Yeah, OK, me too, for my personal projects, definitely for sure. Um, so these are kind of what I call symptoms. So this is the problem, like how the problems present themselves. Someone calls in, or you find out your web app is suddenly operating very slowly, or you're getting 500, -ish, 500 errors, things like that. So this is kind of what you see. The hard part is what comes next. So you know what's going wrong. You know this is actually what, is, what the problem is manifesting itself as, but you don't really know why, or you don't know the root cause, and you don't really know exactly what happened. It probably works on your local machine, right, or something like that. So that's the hard part, is piecing together all the puzzle pieces, because there's a whole world of things that can go wrong with your web app. It can be anywhere from Azure, or like we, maybe we're having an outage or we're having an issue, all the way down to maybe someone on your dev team just accidentally checked something in and you didn't realize, and it's an application code issue. So any, like those are the extremes and there can be anything in between there as well. So piecing together the puzzle of what actually goes wrong and actually figure out what steps to mitigate the issue as soon as possible is the goal, right? When your manager is calling you, trying to get you to fix this issue, that's kind of their first priority. And we definitely want to make sure we do our customers justice so you can fix your app and make it um, up and running as soon as possible. So now that we talked about kind of what can go wrong and the hard part of diagnosing and solving these issues. I kind of want to jump in because when I go to conferences, I always go for the cool demo. So I want to show you a little bit about what I mean. Okay, so during the day, I'm a PM on the Azure app service team, but I kind of moonlight as a baker. I do it for fun, like make a lot of cool stuff, hopefully bring it to the office sometimes. So decided, I decided today that I could be both. So let's say I'm running a bakery. I'm really well known for my carrot cake and lemon tarts and everything else on there. And I decided to actually start a bakery and bring my um, bread and cupcakes to the cloud so everyone can purchase from this website. Also, if you have your laptops or phone, feel free to navigate to buildbakery.azurewebsites.net and you can actually see that this is live and running and maybe even follow along. So as a bakery owner, I noticed that recently my orders for my carrot cake were dismal. Basically, I got no orders. Everything else is great and fine, but I got no orders for my carrot cake. And 
I know it's not my baking expertise, so maybe it has something to do with my site. So let's see what's happening. I'm going to try to repro this issue. So okay, I'm going to try to order it and click that. Okay, so it's waiting. Seems a little slower than usual. Well, I, would, I see why my customers would leave at this point. Okay, and then it errored out. So there was an error that occurred while processing my request. So that's awful. I want to make sure I want to fix this as soon as possible. So what I'm going to show you guys is actually how I would go and see what the issue is happening and actually diagnose and solve it. So I noticed my symptom was that my web app was running slow and then it threw an error. So what I'm going to do now is go into the Azure portal. Okay, so this is the app service portal and it looks like my app is experiencing a downtime, thank you. So I'm going to go into diagnose and solve problems. So this is actually one of our newest features for Azure app service. This is called app service diagnostics. And Basically, this is an intelligent and interactive guided experience to help your, you guys actually diagnose and solve problems with your web app. So here, it's kind of a fun interactive interface. We have Jeannie, who is going to help, if, or the fun name for App Service Diagnostics, who will help us um, figure out what's going on. So, okay, Build Bakery is having a problem. I noticed that my web app was slow, so let's check that out. These colorful tiles here, I call tile shortcuts, and they basically correlate to common scenarios that we've seen our customers, our app service customers face. And they're also organized by parent category. So as you can see, I'm having availability and performance issues, and my web app slow tile shortcut is organized in that way. So I'll try to see what's going on there. Okay, so it looks like what's going on, um, how is, I see that there's multiple downtimes that's happening when I'm getting requests, and these response times are definitely way higher than they should be. So as you can see, what's first presented is this graph. So you can kind of see the response time in the 50th percentile go way up during this time frame. And also, what I want to call out is that I can actually choose what time frame I'm interested in. So I'll choose this orange bar. Cool. Okay, so let's see what App Service Diagnostics has found for me. So I go into observations, and it says they called out two things, application errors and that there's an app issue. So it said that there might be an issue with my application code and that there were slow requests detected in the web app. So I look at the observations to see if that matches up with what I see when I actually hit the site myself, and I would say that's pretty accurate. Next, we actually have application insights. So if you, so one of actually the common questions that I get when people ask me about app service diagnostics is do I need to configure anything to get this experience? And the answer is no. This actually comes for free and out of the box. So you can actually use this right away for your web apps. But we actually launched our integration with Application Insights um, earlier this build, yesterday morning. And we now, if you have Application Insights enabled, which is something you have to do an uh, extra step, you actually can see something more issues related to your application code. So as you can see here, App Insights has pulled out the top slowest dependencies that were happening during this time period. So it looks like there may be an issue with SQL and that is related to the slow requests that were happening. Okay, good to know. Um, so now that I know this information, what can I actually do with this data? So what we have here is troubleshooting and next steps. So basically it seems like I can maybe remote profile my app. So it looks like I got an investigation step. So I can go and do this and learn more. What I really like about this is that we kind of call this actionable documentation. So it has all of this information all right here, but you can actually do this right here without having to go to another tab or click away from this screen. So I actually can go ahead and start collecting a profiler trace. So you can see it'll go through all four different steps. And basically why I would do this is that if my app is down or running slowly, I can collect a profiler trace and identify the root cause. 
so I can learn a little bit more and actually can do this. So I can start the profiler, reproduce the issue, and then once it's done, it'll generate a really nice report. So um, I, sorry? Um, I'll take questions at the end, but basically this profiler is just, um, we're going to be uh, looking through the issues and I'll show you the report and maybe that'll help. So I have some of the reports already here. So we'll load that. Okay, so this is the results of my .NET profiling app or .NET profiler analyzer. So you can see kind of what happened during the trace and when I reproduced the issues when I did this, um, it found a few different things. So I'm interested in the slow request and the fail request since that's what I saw going wrong with my web app. And I can actually see here that the slash home slash details one, which is the page that I was trying to access to um, order a carrot cake, had was really slow, so 14 seconds is not okay. Um, and I can look at the details, so I can actually can see the stack trace here. And if I scroll all the way down, I can see and validate what Application Insights told me, which, that, which is that there's something wrong with SQL. So maybe something wrong with connecting to SQL. Now, I wanna make sure that this problem is the same problem as I see when I get the error. Like once it actually loads, I wanna make sure this is not two separate issues, that maybe it's the same root cause. So to make sure that, I'm gonna go look at these fail requests. Okay, so it's failing on the slash home slash details slash one, so that's for my carrot cake. And I look at the details here. Okay, so that I feel comfortable now that's the same issue because I see here it says that there might be an error related to my connection to the SQL server. So maybe um, the app couldn't find the SQL server, maybe there's something wrong with the connection. Okay, so now I know this information, I know what went wrong. So the symptom is my web app was slow and then it went down. Then I looked and I see what actually happened is that we're having issue connecting to SQL. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to figure out if I can fix it. So I'm gonna go back to App Service Diagnostics and look a little bit more into these tile shortcuts. So we looked at availability and performance, but what we have next is that we, our new diagnostic tools. So I'm running a .NET application, so this is actually perfect, but in any case, you can actually change the stack and see specific diagnostic tools for the stack of your interest. Um, and since I know there's something wrong with my connection to SQL, maybe there's something wrong with my connection strings. So I'm gonna click on check connection strings. This is one of our newest diagnostic tools, and this will actually validate all the connection strings that you configured for your app. So this can be like app settings, environment variables that you put in your app settings. Um, great, okay, so we actually, something happened here. So under orders, it says, okay, great. So it looks like it says that there's something wrong connection string, um, and that's why the SQL server, we can't connect to it. So if I look at it, I might have just, yeah, I forgot to replace right here, replace with prod database, I didn't do that. So I'm gonna go and actually fix this issue. So it, I definitely configured something wrong when I was configuring my connection string. So I'm gonna go to the healthy one, go here, I'm gonna copy the correct one this time. Okay, now I'm gonna actually go in to fix it. So I'm gonna go into app settings and actually put this as a connection string. on there. Oh, that's the wrong. <laughs> Get my connection string again. But as you can see, it's super great. These new diagnostic tools I love because it's just really simple to be able to actually see what's going on in your web app and you can feel really empowered when you can actually use these quick tools and mitigate or fix the issue as soon as possible. I'm going to try this one more time. I just need to make sure I'm actually copying the right thing. Okay. 
okay, something I can't copy and paste today, apparently. But I'll just, so once I do figure out how to copy and paste my computer, I will do that and have that app up and running and performing great. And this is really cool because this is kind of the end-to-end -end scenario. You can start out with a symptom and actually figure out exactly what the problem is and go and fix that yourself. So, um, so that's great and awesome. Um, so who really thinks that this might be something helpful for them? Cool. Okay, awesome. So hopefully most of the time your web app is running healthy and maybe you just want to come in and do a sanity check, have peace of mind, assure yourself that things are actually working correctly. So next I'm going to show you um, different types of features that this app has that my Build Bakery app didn't have. Um, so I used some of my carrot cake and gave them to my team so they would actually have a live site incident for me ready for just this particular app. So don't worry about your own web apps. They're fine. They're fine. Um, and right here, what I love about App Service Diagnostics is that it actually tells you the difference between if it's a Azure App Service issue or maybe something related to your issue in your application code. So a live site incident is what happens when there is like a wider spread Azure outage. So as you can see here, it will call it out immediately in this orange bar. So it says there's a service incident, incident that might have affected my app, and I can actually click here to learn more. So luckily, this one was resolved, and you actually can see the summary of impact, exactly what went wrong, because these are the details that our engineers put together for you guys because um, we looked into the issue and solved it. So right now, what I know is that I don't have to worry about this issue at the moment because it was something that was on the Azure App Service side that went wrong, but it's now resolved. So I can kind of keep a little uh, sanity check here. If there's no orange bar there, that means there um, probably isn't a LSI or live site incident affecting your subscription. Next, um, if you notice down here, um, what you can also do is perform a health checkup. So let's say you're new to troubleshooting, you're new to diagnosing and solving your issues with your web app. I always tell people to come and run a health checkup first. And that's because it can be kind of difficult to figure out what is actually going wrong with your web app because there's a lot of different things that could go wrong. So what can happen here, or what we're going to do here is basically run a health checkup, and this will look at requests and errors, it can look at slow performance, CPU, memory, and different types of issues. So I'm going to actually go ahead and run that again. So it will summarize this all into a beautiful report and call out in red, in orange, basically things that are going wrong right now or are going, or have went wrong in like the previous 24 hours. If everything is green, that's your sanity check right there because everything is working correctly. Okay, so everything clearly not working correctly on this app, but that's okay, that's, me that's meant to happen. Um, so as you can see, you can see that my requests and errors are going wrong, but, um, and that could re be related to high CPU because that is also showing up in red. And I can go here and I can actually follow through to the steps and actually go through the exact troubleshooting process that I showed you the first time around in the web app um, and continue into this kind of uh, UI chat-like interface. So you can look at the high CPU and look at CPU per instance. And you can actually see the troubleshooting next steps right here, so all on the same screen. And I really like this because you can scroll up and down and get back to the tile shortcuts if you want to investigate something else or maybe use a different tool. So here you can see we actually see a mitigation step. So before you saw that we suggested an investigation step, and now this is a mitigation step. And we can also do the remote profiling like we did earlier. But if I'm up in the middle of the night trying to figure out what the issue is, I can just do a quick um, application restart. And if I click this blue button, it's like a nice blue fix it button that would actually restart the app right then and there. And then also, most importantly, what I really think is cool is that you can leave feedback right in line with App Service Diagnostics. So I can actually enter something here and 
our team reads every single one of this feedback and we actually improve app service diagnostics based on what you put here. So all the new tile shortcuts, those are all from suggestions from our app service diagnostics users. So I'll now actually talk about one of the new tile shortcuts that we launched because people were interested in what they can do, what best practices they can actually go through when they're running a production application. So right here under management and configuration, we have a few new tile shortcuts. The one I want to call out is this green one, check best practices per, for prod apps. So there's a lot of times where maybe you're starting out with app service, you want to just test it out, you're doing a little dev testing, but once you love it, you realize you actually want to build your production applications here, you might want to configure things a little bit differently. So check best practices for prod apps is really great because um, it will call out what you should do and have these insights to help you improve your app so it's more stable and more reliable. So it will call out in green what things that you're already doing well. It will give you a nice like good job um, and uh, say that you're doing well. And then the orange ones are warnings. So those I would suggest definitely reading a little bit more about because um, depending on your particular use case, um, you might want to fix the orange one or um, let go ahead and let it go. So for this particular app, we have a couple of critical ones. So these are in red. These are called insights, and you actually can click in and expand them to get a little bit more information. So you can see the scenario. So right now, I'm not using deployment slots. Um, I don't know if you guys know what our deployment slots are, but basically a really easy way for your dev team, you and your dev team, to deploy into a staging environment before you deploy in your production environment. And then you can just swap them. and um, before you and test everything in staging before you swap them for production for your customers. So it's recommending me to use deployment slots because if you don't, you have you it could be really easy for you to check in code and update something and do a deployment on your production app that might go down because of that. Um, next, so it seems like I don't have always on enabled. So right now I have always on disabled, which means that if my site is inactive for an extended period of time, um, the process would shut down to conserve resources and basically it might lead to a long cold start. So we definitely don't want that to happen for a production app. So I'll go back and turn that on in my app settings. So you can actually go in and do this yourself and actually analyze the best practices for your production applications right here. So there's a few of them here um, in orange and you can do this uh, so on and so forth. And I love just kind of clicking on the green ones because it tells you how great of a job you're doing. Great, so um, that's great. All kind of what I want to walk through for the window side of things. So, because next, we're going to be talking a little bit about what happens, what kind of scenarios can happen with your container and Linux-based applications. Okay, so for our web app for containers customers, or if you're interested in learning more about app service on Linux, there are also different sets of issues that could happen. So, web app for container web apps, may still have similar issues to the Windows ones. So like I said, it could might be an Azure outage, might, some, might be related to your application code. So you still have that whole world of problems that could happen. However, since you're bringing your own custom Linux container or um, using our built-in images, there are also questions that are specific to Web App for Containers and specific to App Service on Linux. And these all kind of have to do with containers and maybe images and Docker logs and things like that. So it's a different set of issues that may happen because um, of uh, with containers and things like that. And we want to make sure that we're addressing those as well. So I'm going to go and jump back to the demo here. Okay, so we actually have a very similar version of our bakery app, but now done in Node. So this is actually running on our web app or app service uh, Linux platform, and this is a custom container um, that is running this 
uh, this app. So something is going wrong and I'm getting that service unavailable error that kind of just pops up on the screen and there's not really any context. So that's the symptom that I'm trying to go and solve in this case. So it's very similar. You can go into diagnose and solve problems and here you, can, you would notice that there's container specific um, new uh, tile shortcuts that you can check out. So because I can't access my application, there is a, might be something going wrong with my container starting up. So I'm going to go click on container start issues and see what's happening here. Okay, so it looks like there are container start failures during this time range. So it's telling me that my container start timed out. So now I know specifically that the container started, but it didn't respond. And maybe that has to do something with my app settings and um, something with my port, it's telling me. So kind of as a sanity check to kind of see all the errors that happened, you can scroll down and kind of just see what's happening here. Okay, next, I kind of want to see what this looks like, looks like in my Docker logs. So actually, I'm going to go and use and go and click that link and actually go to our SCM site, or Kudu. This is our source control manager site that would have all our Docker logs here. And I'm gonna go look at what's happening. Yeah, so Kudu is actually really great because um, you can use it to see all your logs and actually get a glimpse as to what's happening inside your container. I, uh, I saw that, thank you. Great, so it looks like I was running a debugger and nothing here seems like um, something that I'm interested in, but I noticed that there are two log files. So you can see here that all of them will be here in easy links for you to look at. So I'm going to actually go check out the other one. Okay, so here, this is this looks like what I'm interested in. So I see what's happening. It tried to start the container. So you can see that very clearly here. And Right here, I see something related to port. So back in App Service Diagnostics, it told me to check my port settings. So right here, it says that um, websites underscore port, one of my app settings is configured to 5,000. Um, I don't remember if that's the case of what I did into my actual application. So I'm going to go double check my Docker file, which was where I declared this. OK, so that's there. Go look there. So. I set my environment variable, but I exposed port 8080 here, actually. So this is the issue. I misconfigured my port setting, and that is the reason why um, my container timed out. And when my container tried to start, it was having issues. So you can actually quickly see that I'm exposing port 8080, but something um, I'm not actually doing that in reality because I bet when I go into my application settings that I'm going to be seeing um, something else. So yes, exactly. So here, if I go 8080, like that's a fix right then and there. And now my container is back up and running, and I, I should be able to start it, and things should be able to work. Awesome. So. This is great. You can use App Service Diagnostics for your Windows web apps and your Linux web apps, regardless if they're a custom container or you're using a built-in image. So they, it would all work for those scenarios. But I, would, but I also want to show off one of our newer, one of our newest announce, announcements for Build that we have going on, which is what happens when this isn't enough? What happens when this is something related to your application code? So we actually launched um, remote debugging for Node apps running on App Service on Linux for Build yesterday. So I'm going to actually show you a demo of that. So I'm going to have I have this app. It's a no shopping app, so it's right here. But what happens when I actually want to do remote debugging here? 
So I can actually really easily do it in VS Code by using the app service extension. So I'm going to launch VS Code here. And we'll see that I have my app service extension right here. All right, so I'm going to go and uh, navigate to my node shopping app. And what's really great is that you actually don't need your application to be running on your local machine. Once you have your app service extension here, you can actually um, do your remote debugging straight from VS Code without actually having it in your local machine. So if you notice, my web space right here for my node shopping app is actually empty. Give it a second. All right. OK, so I'm going to go to my Node Shopping app. And once you have this extension installed, it's actually very easy. All you have to do is right click and enable remote debugging. All right, awesome. And then I'm going to attach the debugger. So once I do that, you can see everything is loading right here, down in the bottom. And I can go ahead and now set my breakpoints. I've set one on index.js um, right here. And it performs exactly how you would expect a remote debugging um, process to perform. And you can step in, um, hit your web app, and actually walk through all the different steps. So this is something that you should definitely try. It's very easy to download the app service extension for VS Code and run this right away. And it's also kind of is like something that we definitely want to see how you guys use it for Node because we're going to be bringing it, bringing it into our other runtimes that we have for app service on Linux. So you'll be seeing it soon for Java and for all the other stacks that we'll be adding to Linux as well. Great. And then another thing that we have also new for Linux and containers is that you can actually have a brand new experience for doing SSH into your Linux application. So this actually comes um, really out of the box. And all you have to do is make sure you have Azure CLI um, downloaded and make sure you have um, the newest version. Make sure you set the subscription that you're using. And after you do those steps to set yourself up, it's a really easy command that you can see I performed here previously. Um, you can just do az web app remote dash connection and then create. And then the node shopping is my resource group. And node shopping is also the name of my web app. And then you can just open the port where you want to SSH into. So this is really great if you just kind of want to get a deeper dive into what's going on with the underlying processes. So really great for peace of mind. And also just great if you're used to this. If you're just like someone who loves Linux and are used to doing SSH on your container and your application, this is a really re easy way to do that. Yep, so it says it's open, so I can go get a pudding. All right, awesome. So you can see we're in. And just to prove to you that this works, I'll just perform like a top command. And you can see everything that you're used to seeing in any kind of um, SSH. And this works for all SSH clients. So you should definitely go ahead and try this out um, if you're one of our interested Linux and containers developers. Great. OK, so now we're wrapped up. 
how you can use App Service Diagnostics for Linux and containers. You can try out our new uh, VS Code extension where you can try remote debugging for your Node applications, and you also can SSH in your container. Um, so next, I'm actually going to switch gears and talk about App Service Environment. So App Service Environment is actually pretty interesting because it's pretty different than just running a web app on um, regular App Service. App Service Environment is actually obviously the environment that you can deploy a web app into. So you can have secure network access, you can deploy um, your app service environment into a VNet, basically being able to talk to everything else in your VNet, and that allows you to set network security group rules, route tables, all of that that comes with it. And also you have additional scaling capabilities like I mentioned earlier, so you can scale up to actually 100 different VMs. The thing with app service environment is that if there's an issue going on with the app service environment, that may impact um, your web app itself because it's running in the app service environment. So the symptoms would manifest in the web app, but maybe underneath there's actually something going on with app service environment. So this can get a little bit tricky because you want to make sure that you're actually troubleshooting the right thing. So I'm going to go and actually figure something out with this. So here with App Service Environment, let's say your um, network, you're working at an enterprise company and you're a developer. And your network administrator is the person who set up your App Service Environment. And he's like, we set it up. It's all running. It's great. You can put your web apps in it right now. So I go, great, okay, I'm gonna deploy my web app in there. This is just um, any random web app. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy it into the app service environment that my network admin made for me and put into VNet and did all the um, complicated networking part. So I'm going to try to deploy this web app into this app service environment. Um, my network administrator named it djo1ace. So I'm going to try to figure out if I can do that. OK, let's go. I'm going to create a new app service plan here. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar with App Service, this is basically just like a fancy name for a server farm. It basically just um, contains all the information um, for like the location, the, ty the types of VMs that you indicated, and things like that. So isolate is the pricing tier for App Service environment. I'm going to go look to see if I can choose the correct App Service environment here. So I'm looking for djo one ace And as you can see, it doesn't show up in the dropdown. So there's some definitely major issue going on, and if this is something where I can't reach my network administrator, I need to figure out what's going on. So what can I do? Let's see, I'm gonna go and look at my app service environment. So here it is, I found it, um, djo one a so it definitely exists. So I'm gonna go in there, and as of this build, our newest announcement is that we brought app service diagnostics to app service environment. So as you can see here, there's something unhealthy that's going on. And I'm going to check out if there's some issues maybe with our app service environment specific settings, such as the network security group rules. So right here, I can see NSG verifier. So this actually go and look at all the network security group rule, rules that you set up for your app service environment. So OK. I see that there might be an issue here, and it will surface the critical one up here right on top. So I'm going to go in and check it out. So it says that there is this port, 454-455, that Azure Infrastructure uses to maintain the app service environment, and that there is a rule that actually block is blocking this connectivity. So it tells me exactly what to do. So all I need to do is actually just create a higher priority rule that will allow the traffic to go through this port. So 
actually, I feel pretty empowered not being my network administrator to actually go ahead and do this because it's so simple. All I have to do is go into the NSG rules and add this port in. So th that can easily be accessed here and you can go and look at all the network security group rules that your network administrator has set up for you and just add one yourself. So you can actually solve the problem right here and um, quickly just put in the port number and everything like that when you create a new rule at a higher priority and things should work after that. So it's really cool because it kind of eliminates the back and forth. I feel like a lot of time when you're spending on troubleshooting, diagnosing your application, especially in a very large team, it could be something where there's disconnect. And um, instead of, in, in maybe instead of having to spend time going back and forth, you can just use this and actually fix this yourself. Another thing with um, app service environment is that, like I said, that you can actually scale out to 100 different instances. So scaling is definitely something that our customers on ACE are concerned about. And sometimes scaling does have issues depending on outbound connectivity. So I'm actually going to look at that and see, even after I fix my NSG rules, if this is going to cause me any issues. So right here up front, I see that this app service environment is trying to connect to Azure Storage, but we're having an issue connecting, um, and you can see exactly what's happening here. So right, you can see here that we're having outbound connectivity issues to Azure Storage, and all you have to do is follow these solution steps, and you can go ahead and fix it right away. So basically, you can go ahead and it looks like there's something wrong with the route table and you have to check to make sure you're including a default route that allows Azure Storage to talk to your app service environment and therefore your web app will be up and running correctly. Okay, great. So now that we solved our app service environment issues, we're gonna move on to serverless. So we're gonna go look at what can happen with Azure Functions and how we can deal with it on that side. Okay, so Azure Functions is our serverless offering and Azure Functions can be very different because it's really cool, you can be able to execute custom code on demand and basically have event-driven architecture. So you can write these little pieces of code and everything is event-driven. So basically, you can take advantage of what's called a consumption plan and only get charged for whenever you execute that event and not, really, and not pay for that idle time in between when you don't have any events executed between. So that is the really great benefit of Azure Functions, which is why it's so popular amongst, um, amongst our customers. But because Azure Functions is so different than what you've seen earlier with web apps, with containers, with um, app service environment, there's a whole different set of issues that can go wrong. This can be very sp function specific regarding the different types of triggers that you can do. So you can have like HTTP triggers and time triggers, um, bindings, issue, issues with binding, issues with scaling. So there can be different issues with scaling depending on if you're running on consumption or you actually chose to purchase a dedicated instance to run your Azure functions on. So these are some like a short list of the issues that could go wrong. So when this happens, what can you do about it? So I'm gonna show you um, one of the functions that I have right now. So this is called functions func, so obviously something's going wrong. Um, there's different, there's actually different types of things that you can do. So first, we actually debuted a new monitoring experience. So what's happening to this function is that when I try to run it, it doesn't seem to be triggering, triggering correctly, and I want to figure out what's going wrong. So first, I'm going to go to the Azure Function Portal, go into Monitor, and Monitor will basically give a nice summary of the different types of executions. Basically, when functions tried to, or when Azure Functions tried to execute my function, and maybe things didn't go so well.
Okay, so it seems like there are functions that we're trying to execute, and the duration here is quite significant. This is in milliseconds, but that's definitely a lot longer than I'm used to. Um, it seems to have this happening quite often, so this is definitely an error that I would want to ex uh, definitely investigate further. So there's different types of ways for you to actually dig deeper into this. And one of the ways is that we brought app service diagnostics to functions. So I'm going to actually go here and try to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to click on platform features and go under resource management. And there we have diagnose and solve problems. And it looks like things are taking a long time when I'm trying to run these functions at scale. So it happened when there was like a lot of different executions trying to trigger. So I'm gonna go and look at if there's any function scaling issues by clicking on the function scaling issues tile shortcut. So functions are interesting because they obviously can operate at a very high scale, but you also still have to think about how you architect your function, making sure that when you build your function and function apps, that you're making sure each function is doing this one event, this event-driven scale. If you have two events, you might want to break it, up and break it up into multiple functions. And I don't think I actually did this for this particular function. So, Right here, we get a quick info information about how we can identify function scaling issues. So it tells me that I should look for time periods with high CPU and, or memory, but at the same time, we're not increasing the number of functions workers that are actually trying to, um, like we're trying to run our function on. So as you can see, it's a time trigger, so the function invocations are definitely going, but it looks like I'm only getting one function worker allocated, and that doesn't make any sense, especially if I'm seeing high CPU. So this has function workers allocated, but also below that, we have the function worker average CPU percentage. So as you can see here, this is really not great. So it's running at almost 90% CPU, and memory is also um, is, is okay, but basically I'm looking at high CPU, but only one function worker allocated. So that definitely will cause a lot of issues because you're basically not, you're having scaling issues. And looking at this, it definitely seems like something that I have to go back and look at my function to figure out if I'm ar actually architecting it correctly. So, um, I'm gonna go and look at that right now just to show you what I'm actually doing in this function. So, right here, I'm gonna go look at what I'm actually doing. And although this seems, when it shows up, kind of a scenario that will never happen, like why would you run a for loop through 90 billion times just to execute seven times five? This is just an example of how I can show you how these problems can actually manifest. So all jokes aside, while your function probably is not doing this, when you do have scaling issues, it could be because you're trying to do too many things in one function execution, and that could be consuming high CPU. When that happens, you're going to have scaling issues because it's gonna be consuming high CPU, but not scaling out the workers. So in this case, um, I would definitely try to break up my function. So like I said earlier, it would be an event driven where it's one event, one function. If it's more than that, I'm gonna to try to break it up and have multiple functions in my function app. So now you can go and try out app service diagnostics or functions to see if you have scaling issues, but also run a health checkup and make sure everything is actually going okay and see if you're running on best practices, such as um, what I have been telling you about. All right, so going back to the PowerPoint, we covered all four different types of, um, th of types of platforms available under app service. So this is kind of what I wanted to end off with for our key takeaways. So definitely um, if you uh, have been paying attention to this, this is where you want to start off your diagnosing and solving process is app service diagnostics. So app service diagnostics is a perfect starting point because as you can see, it's a perfect way to figure out, even if you know what the symptom is, figure out what can actually go wrong. So what actually is happening under the hood behind the scenes that you don't know about because you're only looking at the symptoms. 
So you can try that out. If you don't know what's going on, you don't even know what the symptoms are, try a health checkup. That will guide you to the right place. If you do know your particular problem scenario, select a tile shortcut that matches the problem that you're having. And make sure to definitely leave feedback in line because that will help us improve tile shortcuts. When you actually want to act on the data that you've seen, try out our troubleshooting next steps because data is great and all for you trying to figure out what's going wrong. But at the end of the day, like we said earlier, the goal is to actually fix the issue and figure out what happened. So the troubleshooting and next steps will give you that. It will give you the mitigation steps and the investigation steps for you to know what the root cause and what actually happened. And I'm not going to go and recap all of this for each of the four categories, but if you guys want to take a picture, feel free. This is a really easy way to get started with app service diagnostics, whether you're going and going to be running this on Windows, on Linux, or containers, on app service environment, or functions. So with that, I'm going to end off with our helpful links and resources slide. So if you haven't tried out app service yet, try it out in the first link. We have different build announcements, so I'll include it, I included that there. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. And once you try out App Service Diagnostics, definitely go ahead and take our survey. You can actually reach us directly through that as well. Um, and with that, I hope you go ahead and try out App Service Diagnostics and hopefully be more empowered when you're having issues with any of these applications on PaaS or serverless and figure things out and self-serve yourself. So with that, I'm open to questions and invite AJ up as well. Um, so the latter, and basically, but you can go and configure that yourself, but by default, um, if you select that you want to include application insights on there, it's actually really great because it will come and just connect to, I think, the closest region where you have your app service um, deployed into. So application insights has six different regions available. Um, they're probably adding more. I would definitely go talk to them about that, but they would try to kind of figure out which one's the closest so you're not going across different regions. But you can't specify, like, how to go to a certain app insights? Like, we already have one created. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, I'm actually not sure about that. I can go back with the App Insights team and check, but. Great, awesome. Yeah. Um, do you have any examples? That what isn't getting through? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so we're definitely, like we launched functions diagnostics on preview, but if that's the case, I would definitely check out, um, so in the functions health checkout, check up, there will be functions in error. So if there, are any, if there aren't any functions in error, that should be green, but if you're not, nothing is reaching your function, there probably is something related to a function just not being error and not being able to start up, and those errors would be seen um, in the functions health checkup underneath that section.
about millions of like what is the upgrade process going on and how to how to insulate yourself from those uh, shutdowns. Yeah, so when our infrastructure does go through upgrades, that's like part of what makes PaaS great because we can continuously patch anything that goes wrong. It shouldn't cause any downtime, but on the off chance that it does, there are different ways of, I guess, preempting that. So there's actually a great blog on our app service team blog written by Oden, who kind of goes through how we upgrade the app service infrastructure. So basically what happens kind of at a very short high level, because the blog does a really great way of explaining that, is that it kind of goes through region by region to upgrade the different VMs and maybe um, when we do that, maybe there's something that goes wrong or maybe exposes a race condition. So I would, for that, definitely recommend doing something and enabling Azure Traffic Manager and making sure you're spread out across different regions, especially since we won't be upgrading regions kind of in the same like geolocation because if we realize an error in one, we can go ahead and fix it before we move ahead with deploying out the fix to all the other VMs. Um, yeah, so not at the moment, but that's something that we're definitely thinking about and going to be working with. So the, we'll probably be moving towards maybe trying to figure out which ones are the most popular notifications that people would be interested in. So what we've seen is people are always interested in just the regular like web app down when that's unhealthy to get a notification. Um, so maybe we'll start out with that as well, but hopefully at the like long term, maybe even have you be able to configure what you would want to know about. Mm-hmm. 
فأنا بدفع بياس وورد سمبري وفول من الدولار المعاصي 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 من Yeah. And then in app service diagnostics, you can see when that happened. So if you clicked on web app down under observations, it would be tagged auto heal. And then you can read a little bit about it. And then when you click view more, you can actually just see a bar graph of all the, like if you had more than one auto heal, how that happened and when that happened. So if you can correlate them together, that's what happened with your auto heal. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep, so right now it's only for Node, but we're hoping to bring it to all um, the stacks, basically, that we have on Linux. So let me repeat the question that you know, say basically, if you can generalize that an application, it's your target or even the The answer is twofold. The first answer is yes. If you're doing the app service on Linux and choosing a .NET core as a drop-down runtime to host, like bring your own code, then you have to be on by default and put the remote code engaging inside the container but if you're bringing your own container that's running .NET Core, well, then it's up to you to pay that remote debug engagement or whatever the library is. And then you can use all these tooling to connect to that, right? So you can that's what it is. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll document the process. That's something that you can do today if you're used to, because the client is already being shipped as a part of our CLI. Uh, but it's just that, you know, figuring out what that debugger is going to look like and uh, what that container back, yeah, we'll, we'll just need to document. Yeah, and also same for SSH. So you would have to add a few lines to your Docker file when you're bringing your own custom container to have SSH working as well. Running, what the manifold stack is, and 
and we push it forward as deeply as you want. Uh, we're we'll trying to abstract the whole motion away by simplifying the process for the majority of the objects. Yeah, well, I mean, Awesome. Thank you guys so much.